This is Saurabh, and, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, show the, the, the Weekly Show with Aditya. The Survivor Series is one pay-per-view I have been looking forward to this year. In contrast to the other pay-per-views where these wrestlers jostled to win a championship from their fellow rival and that's what the storyline is all about. Here in this particular pay-per-view, it's two brands coming together to show which is the supreme brand champions from both brands who have fought their rivals on that particular brand will come face to face and it happens only once a year that is why it becomes one of the most interesting pay-per-views and the storyline created towards it as to how the character turns heel or is the baby face of the company Drew McIntyre's story of becoming the baby face of the company after winning his first ever world championship and effort which took him nearly 15 years as the character went from being a sidekick to being the main guy on the roster as far as the men's championship is concerned. Starting the year by winning the Royal Rumble, then defeating Brock Lesnar at a very unique WrestleMania, going on to defend the set championship, losing it to Randy Orton and then winning it again just in time to face one of his more well-known adversaries on the other side, Roman Reigns, who's also had a unique year as far as his come back into the company and turning heel is concerned. So McIntyre, the WWE World Champion versus Reigns, the WWE Universal Champion. One represents Raw, the other represents SmackDown. The stories of how they won their respective championships went on a long hiatus, came back, resumed and won the championship again is what defines the story between the world champion and the universal champion as to who has a greater chance of winning i have only one word to say it. it's too early to call since both are champions from their respective brand so there is no added incentive to do something extra they can be at their semi best and still put up a memorable performance but who has a chance of winning and which brand will reign supreme too early to call will it be the claymore kick or the spear is something that one will have to wait and watch but the stories surrounding their comebacks winning the championship is very interesting moving on there is the men's tag team championship that is the raw tag team champions the new day former smackdown tag team champions who were drafted to raw and in turn the former raw tag team champions that is the street profits who were drafted to smackdown and they became smackdown tag team champions by a simple exchange of titles Two tag teams with a similar attitude of fun and frolic. Two tag teams with the most athletic of the wrestlers ever present. Two tag teams trying to secure their legacy in the world of tag teams which has been given the legacy by the Hart Foundation, the Harlem Heat, the Dudley Boys, the... Hardy Boys, the Uso, and now it's up to the Street Profits and the New Day to continue the legacy of what is the tag team division. Most of the champions in this particular pay-per-view have a similar mindset, have a similar backstory as to how they went on to win their respective championships. On one hand, the pundits would say that the New Day have the experience being doing this for six years, having broken all 
tag team records a street profit having just joined the roster a couple of years ago have the novelty the athleticism and also are carrying forward the legacy of various tag team which have come and put that stamp as far as the tag team division is concerned so yes it will be a close call unlike the previous survivor series where the brand supremacy extended up to the individuals running the show that is the general managers and the commissioners this year there is no concept of general managers and commissioner so the brand supremacy is limited to the athletes themselves that is why the storyline around this year's survivor series was very different from the previous years where we saw one brand infiltrate the other to show their one upmanship now moving on to two championships that is the united states championship and the intercontinental championship two of them who are often relegated to the bottom of the ladder not a main event type of championship but equally an important kind of championship because of all the hype created around this as to how the intercontinental championship represents many countries while the usa championship represents one country and all the back story between bobby lashley and sami zayn and how they have defended their championships through the use of their athleticism as well as the use of their wit and how all lashley and sami zayn specifically have had previous encounters do in a different realm it's a tricky one to decide who has the upper hand in this particular championship match but as always the incentive of defending or winning a championship is not part of the story right now it's about proving that me as a champion is better than you as the champion irrespective of the fact that who holds which particular championship or who represents which particular brand because as the storyline goes you can be a part of any brand any time moving on to the women's championship that is the raw women's championship who is currently aska versus sasha banks who is the smackdown women's champion these two had their rivalry for months when sasha banks was going after aska to secure the raw women's championship that was a different story line and now these two will meet again as your respective champions once again it's not about defending or jostling the respective championship from the other athlete it's about saying that me as a champion is better than you so will it be the bank statement versus the aska log whose submission will work more who will tap out first who will get the three count first will it be a match won by count out or disqualification remember count out or disqualification comes into effect though in this case there is no champions advantage and therefore all the matches scheduled for this particular pay per view are at an level means there is no advantage for any of the athletes except proving that me as a champion has done better defending it winning it then you have done it so it will be more about the psychological effects of this particular championship then we move on to the traditional 5 on 5 tag team elimination match which means five men wrestlers and five women wrestlers from each brand will face each other and remember they have been part of the other brand before so they are now on the opposite side of the spectrum this is the only time when these individuals have to be on the same page because it's about the brand supremacy and not their individual prowess but as it always happens every year it's impossible to bring these wrestlers or as the storyline goes it's impossible to bring these wrestlers on the same page as far as winning the particular 
elimination match is concerned because when you have the likes of Braun Strowman, Sheamus, AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, in the ring you may see temporarily alliances against the other and the storyline created around the ego clashes will continue because these wrestlers who are coming together once every 12 months to compete for the same brand to be part of the same team and not be a rival in that particular match will compete against each other once this particular pay-per-view gets over because they all have one goal whether it's a storyline or whether it's real to win the respective world championship on the respective brand so the five individuals on raw who are coming together who have to set aside their ego for this particular moment which also includes the women wrestlers they all are jostling to win the respective championships so the one on draw are going after drew mcintyre and asuka and the one on smackdown are looking to compete and challenge roman reigns for the universal championship as well as sasha banks for the respective women's championship so the ego clashes are a part of the story and it will continue to be a part of the story as far as creating the hype around this particular pay-per-view is concerned so which of the two brands in their respective singles and tag team matches have a chance well it's difficult to know at this time because both the sides have good enough wrestlers who have proven themselves on both the brands so whatever happens on that day it will be a good clash of champions All good things got to come to an end. The thrills have to fade before they come round again. The bills will be paid and the pleasure will mend. All good things got to come to an end. God, I wish I was home, laying down with my friends. The call of the wild caution thrown to the wind. The fall of the child where the longing begins. All good things got to come to an end. Like a river flows, rolling till it ends in the sea. But pleasure grows, rolling till it ends in you and me. Now as the dark gathers into the sky, and legions of might go thundering by, regions of light grow dim and then die, and we with our wings wait for morning to fly like a river flows rolling till it ends in the sea our pleasure grows rolling till it ends in you and me rolling till it ends in you and me here where the angels have appeared and are gone your face like an ember glows in the dawn but i want you to remember all while deeds live on all good times all good friends all good things got to come to an end the thrills have to fade before they come round again the bills will be paid and the pleasure will mend all good things got to come to an end Hercule Poirot went up in the lift to Sir Joseph Hoggins' office. He sent in his card and was told that Sir Joseph was engaged at the moment, but would see him presently. A haughty blonde sailed out of Sir Joseph's room at last with her hands full of papers. She gave the quaint little man a disdainful glance in passing. Sir Joseph was seated behind his immense mahogany desk. There was a trace of lipstick on his chin. Well, Mr. Poirot, sit down. Got any news for me? Hercule Poirot said. The whole affair is of a pleasing simplicity. 
In each case, the money was sent to one of those boarding houses or private hotels where there is no porter or hall attendant and where a large number of guests are always coming and going, including a fairly large preponderance of ex-service men. Nothing would be easier than for anyone to walk in, abstract a letter from the rack, either take it away or else remove the money and replace it with blank paper. Therefore, in every case, the trail ends abruptly in a blank wall. You mean you have no idea who the fellow is? I have certain ideas. Yes, it will take a few days to follow them up. Sir Joseph looked at him curiously. Good work. Then when you have got anything to report, I will report to you at your house. Sir Joseph said, if you get to the bottom of this business, it will be a pretty good piece of work. Hercule Poirot said, there is no question of failure. Hercule Poirot does not fail. Sir Joseph Hogan looked at the little man and grinned. Sure of yourself, aren't you? He demanded, entirely with reason. Oh, well, Sir Joseph Hogan leaned back in his chair. Pride goes before a fall, you know. No, I expect you'll wriggle out of it somehow, as you always do. I wish I had a fiver for every time you have been within a step of the altered wheels and have managed to escape unscathed. I remember you telling me once that you had faith in your star. Quiet. Still, it's no good trying to pretend that peril doesn't loom. It looms like the dickens. The corner in which I find myself is tight. And you would like to get that way too, I suppose. All right, you can get back to your orgy when I've told you why I rang you up. Haven't you? I said, surprised. Certainly not. You don't catch me wasting time and money chatting with you about your amours. Here is the nub. You know that black amber thing of Basses, the statuette? Of course, I want to buy it for Tom. I have come into a bit of money. The reason I went to London today was to see my lawyer about a legacy someone's left me. Old school friend, if that's of any interest to you. It works out at about a couple of thousand quid and I want you to get that statuette for me. It's going to be pretty hard to get away with it. Or oh, you'll manage. Go as high as 1500 pounds if you have to. I suppose you couldn't just slip it in your pocket. It would save a lot of overhead. But Probably that's asking too much of you. So tackle Basse and get him to sell it. Well, I'll do my best. I know how much Uncle Tom covets that statuette. Rely on me, Aunt Dahelia. That's my boy. I return to the drawing room in somewhat pensive mood. For my relations with Pop Basse were such that it was going to be embarrassing trying to do business with him. But I was relieved that the aged relative had dismissed the idea of loaning the thing. Surprised too as well as relieved because the stern lesson association with her over the years has taught me is that when she wants to do a loved husband a good turn, she is seldom fussy about the methods employed to that end. It was she who had initiated, if that's the word I want, the theft of the cow creamer and you would have thought she would have wanted to save money on the current 
deal. View has always been that if a collector pinches something from another collector, it doesn't count as stealing. And of course, there may be something in it. Pop Dasse, when at Brinkley, would unquestionably have looted Uncle Tom's collection had he not been closely watched. These collectors have about as much conscience as the smash and grab fellows for whom the police are always spreading dragnets. I was musing along these lines and trying to think what would be the best way of approaching Pop, handicapped as I would be by the fact that he shuddered like a jelly in a high wind every time he saw me and preferred in my presence to sit and stare before him without uttering when the door opened and Spood came in. For more awesome content, tune in to the next episode of the weekly show Veda Aditya. For more awesome content, tune in to the next episode of the weekly show Veda Aditya.